uh, uh, today's talk, uh, I will be covering uh, uh, the simulation of uh, power transmission line systems. And below that, uh, uh, <clears throat> carrying uh, the communication, ca communication cables uh, so that uh, uh, you can see the fields calculation along the communication lines uh, you, you you can you can you can you can estimate those things so what happens is uh, in uh, some applications uh, the where the the uh, erecting the power cables power transmission uh, power, power transmission lines it is uh, very difficult because of uh, tough terrains then to make use of the same thing same facility what they do is they they may run communication cables also below below means maybe uh, allowable distances between the power cables and the communication cables so what is allow allowable like uh, uh, the basically these communication cables they are their dielectric materials uh, and uh, they should not be exposed to very high fields uh, due to this uh, power transmission lines so all these things uh, has to be they, they can be simulated before erecting you can simulate and test the uh, you can come to a, a, a you can decide what should be the high what should be the uh, gap between the communication cables and the uh, power cables, we can decide it. Next, uh, uh, next slide, uh, how to go to the next slide? Uh, this, far, this, this is an uh, abstract uh, a simulation of communication cable running below the overhead high voltage power transmission lines is considered in this talk. The reason for laying communication cables below the power lines is just to make use of the infrastructure which is already available. It is important to know the electric field value along the communication cable before installing the cables. As such, the communication lines do not introduce additional electric field. So here I want to uh, mention again, the communication cables, they don't introduce any high fields. Uh, only the high field is due to the transmission line, power transmission line. The electric field is purely by the high voltage power, power lines. Therefore, it is important to study the effects of the parameters influence the field in the high voltage power lines. So what, what we need to do is, uh, we have to see uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the different parameters of the uh, high voltage lines, we have to study uh, for finding out the fields at the communication cables. In addition, the effect of the uneven terrain on the electric fields at the communication cables is discussed in this talk. What happens is uh, in some places, uh, uh, the terrain, it could be a gradually increasing slope, then we have to see that uh, the safest point like uh, uh, the, the uh, like uh, the, uh, right from the one, one end of the pole to the other, uh, other end, we have to see that uh, the safety of the, uh, the safe level of the electric field. The height of the trans uh, transmitting towers are usually in the range of 10 meters to 40 meters. If very high voltage, something like uh, 300, 400 kilowatts uh, lines, there the tower height will be as high as 40 meters. And uh, consecutive distance between the towers anywhere between 200 meters to 400 meters. <clears throat> uh, uh, when when you are doing that kind of large models, like uh, we are talking about, uh, like uh, forty meters height maximum, like uh, two hundred to four hundred meters separated towers. So, to do this kind of computer simulations, uh, see you cannot use uh, 
finite element methods because finite element methods it is uh, they need like uh, uh, five times a bigger space than the maximum dimension in this in this uh, if if you consider the maximum dimension is 300 meters uh, multiply by five times uh, that comes to something like uh, 1.5 kilometers uh, volume of uh, um, with that radius you have to create a, 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 a in that region uh, in that volume you have to put the 3d mesh which is very complicated and it is practically it is not possible so the the best method is boundary element boundary element method this is called bm it's the best suited this best suited boundary element method is best suited for the open region problems open region problems what we mean is uh, uh, <clears throat> see in these applications uh, you are interested not the field field determination and the voltage determination not only at the near to the source and also very far, far from the source also we we require to see that that kind of problems are called open region problems and uh, the 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 software our company produce is called kulum kulum uh, is the software this is a three dimensional electric field solver it 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 it, it, uh, it is based on maxwell's equation integral form it will uh, it will it will discretize the uh, maxwell's equations in an integral form the level of accuracy in this case uh, in the boundary element methods you can get like uh, 99 plus percent accuracy uh, and also it is very fast to fast in sense relatively fast to solve the problems so here uh, on the picture you see here a typical uh, transmitting power with uh, uh, with uh, <coughs> uh, three phase transmission uh, and uh, ground the blue color at the bottom it is a ground uh, the main parameters you have to consider in this simulation is the extent of the ground to be considered in the simulation what should be the width of the ground we should put because the towers are erected right on the ground and ground is it is infinitely long practically is very big so we cannot put all that width what is the extent we have to put we have to include uh, in the simulation so that uh, whatever calculations we do in the field calculations uh, they are right so the power line geometry power line geometry means uh, this can this uh, the lines itself uh, how to simulate those lines the reason is uh, these lines are the diameter of these cables uh, maybe 2 cm or uh, around that 2 cm uh, diameter but uh, the, the 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 width of the ground we model something like uh, 200 meters 300 meters so the aspect ratio will be very very high so how to handle this power cables uh, and also the tower geometry another parameter geometry of the insulators insulators what is the way we should uh, uh, what uh, approximations we can take or or we have to model as it is in some applications we have to model as it is so the fourth parameter the geometry of insulator the fifth parameter is uh, the geometry of the metallic hardware which is holding the insulators uh, there will be so many uh, metallic uh, uh, hardware to hold the insulator, they tie up this to the towers. Uh, then, up, then, then another another thing is: uh, uh, is there any simplification in the model? That is uh, by applying symmetric and linear periodic conditions. Uh, then the effect of the uh, 
uneven terrain also we will consider uh simula uh, here simulation of transmitting tower is a reasonably involved task is a big task correcting a model and resolving it takes considerable amount of time suppose if you don't do it right well okay but then you, to correct it it will take even more time so hence we must be sure what we are doing right at every stage we must be sure what we are doing right so or i will put i will put this way when you do it we have to put all our effort and uh, we we see that uh, once it is done it is very difficult to correct it okay uh, first parameter the extent of the ground what should be the width of the ground to uh, we have to include in the simulation so that the field calculation the accuracy in the field calculation that doesn't get affected uh, so it depends upon see so see here uh, the height height of the tower from the this h uh, i called the h here uh, if the electric field on the ground and 1 meter above the ground are not of your concern that is you are interested the fields only 1 meter above the ground then it is sufficient the width of the ground is equal to the uh, height of the tower that is the first thing suppose uh, when the field in the space between the power lines and 1 meter above the ground or of main concern then the the width must be three times the height of the tower i will once again repeat here again i am going back going back to the kca if the electric field on the ground and 1 meter above the ground are not concerned or not of a concern so then w uh, width is equal to h uh 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 then when the field in the space between the power lines and 1 meter above the ground that is starting from 1 meter all the way to the power line including very close to the power line then you have to put three times the height uh uh suppose when you are interested fields only within 1 meter of the from the ground then you have to include five times the uh, height of the width must be equal the width of the ground must be uh, five times greater uh, five times the height of the tower okay next <clears throat> the extent of the ground to be considered continuation uh, as the size of the ground increases see what is the problem like suppose if i put more extent the uh, the problem is uh, it will take uh, more number of elements that is called the number of 2d triangular elements required to discretize increases and will makes the solver to to make uh, it takes time however in the case a and b the 2d triangular elements density Ah, ah, see, the thing is, uh, the amount of 2D triangular elements that is called we call as mesh uh, in the computational uh, electromagnetics. The standard name is mesh. Uh, this mesh, you need to put. Uh, you don't. You don't have to put such a dense mesh in the cases uh, of uh, uh, case A and B. in case a and b you don't have to put that much uh, dense mesh okay uh, <clears throat> uh in, in case c especially if you are interested the fields right on the ground and just within 1 minute 1 meter above the ground then you have to load the mesh uh, on the ground for the case c the size of the ground decide that takes time to obtain a solution so uh in essence case c takes more time to solve 
than cases A and B. Next, see here, uh, here I'm showing the results uh, like uh, uh, this left side picture, I, the height of the tower is 25 meters. The width I put 25 meters and I'm interested right here on the top of the tower, I'm interested in the fields. I calculated the field pattern here. This is the field, uh, uh, the, 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 this is the uh, uh, demarcation here. Then we increased three times. Now W made it as 75 meters. You observe here, the field has not changed any, any, any amount here. See here, the uh, uh, this is 0 0.9391. This is 0 0.930. So uh, don't forget exponent minus one here. So this is only less than uh, 0.01% variation. Next. Next, uh, <clears throat> here, uh, 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 the same same example we are considering uh, uh, here, just one second. So th then we started from one meter above the ground, go all the way to very close to the transmission line, uh, uh, above the transmission line for all the way here, we plotted the field here approximately 100 meter away from the transmission line. This is the field variation we got, where when extent of the uh, ground width is just only equal to the height of the tower. When we made it three times bigger, practically no change. Uh, 0 0.852, 0 0.851. So practically they're same. So, so if you are interested, the fields one meter two above, then you need to put only height of the tower. The width of the ground must be equal to height of the tower. Next, uh, <clears throat> next, I'm going uh, 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 see because in this talk, the important thing is the fields on the communication cables, and these cables will not be. Uh, within the one meter from the ground. That's why I did not show the results for the uh, uh, for the simulations of the, where the fields, uh, where the simulation requires five times, five times the uh, 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 width is equal to five times the height of the tower. I, that, that simulation I did not show. Now, the next thing is uh, power lines geometry. Power line geometry, if you observe, the height of the tower is some 25 meters. From tower to tower, the, 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 the lines are run around 200 meters to 400 meters. If you, if, if you, model, if you model by a cylindrical line between the, uh, to represent the lines, then when you put the mesh, this, this narrow cylinders, they take huge amount of mesh and the model gets very, very complicated and it is very, very difficult to solve it in the using the bounty element method. Of course, finite element methods, it is out of question. You cannot even solve this kind of problems. Uh, so what is the best solution for this is, uh, so, uh, what, see what you can do is uh, uh, what you can do is uh, this the the power transmission lines which are cylinders of radius anywhere one centimeters to three centimeters. Uh, what you can do is uh, initial of modeling them as like a 3D cylindrical volumes. What you can do is uh, you can use uh, a a line segments, uh, linear, linear uh, uh, conductors, and you can attach a parameter to uh, to that uh, linear conductors. This is uh, I call them as a, a fictitious uh, parameter, a fictitious radius as a parameter. See, 
geometry wise it will it will look like a a linear element linear uh, geometry but we say that it has got we attach a parameter saying its radius we attach a parameter there okay now you see here the, <clears throat> the advantage of voltage assigned linear segments is the linear segments need 1d discretization elements can you see here on this picture the linear conductor is divided into a 1d one dimensional linear elements okay uh, on the ground there is a uh, the, the the mesh i am showing here it is a 2d quadrilateral elements uh, uh, and here you see here in this place uh, if the line is modeled as cylinder a 3d thing then you have to put uh, this kind of uh, uh, 2d quadrilateral elements you have to put then it takes lot of elements and it will be see that that's what i mentioned the number of 2d uh, okay he okay the, 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 this is the problem i'm showing at this place uh, here just a, a 25 meters tower 100 meters long sub, and 20, 25 meters width of ground uh, fictitious radius of 3 centimeters uh, for this if i model with a, a linear conductor then what see 1D linear elements I put uh, 1667. The same thing if I use a, a cylinder, I have to put 12,000 elements I have to put. So it will be the site that it takes more time to solve the problems with the, the 3D conductors. So it is better to put a uh, 1D conductors. Now, then two problems, 3D conductor, uh, a cylindrical conductor, and also 1D conductor I put. Then I calculated the field uh, from the ground A to B, okay, one meter above the ground. Point A is not on, not on the ground, just one meter above the ground. And uh, B, I am about three, four meters below the ground. I, I plotted, you see here, linear segment power lines, the black curve, thin cylinder, the red curve, and actually you cannot see even the difference. They are just one top of the other. To see the difference, I put the graph data I put, and you see here, uh, uh, what I did was, uh, uh, what I did was uh, this column, this the the uh, this is the belongs to the uh, 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 line segment graph and this is a cylindrical thin cylinder and if you observe these results, uh, practically one percent difference is there. These results are close to the ground and this table is around the around the uh, around this B. Okay, next. Now, now this power line geometry is one, one more thing you have to consider is, uh, see, uh, when, you, when you are simulating the power lines, you should not put as a straight lines because there will be sag in the power lines and, uh, and, and the tension applied, they don't apply the maximum tension. Uh, then because uh, if we apply maximum tension because the climatic changes the power lines will break so what they do apply what they do is they apply a, a optimum tension in the cables uh, so at the optimum tension the sag how much sag will be there in the cable is decided by this formula where u is a uh, is the weight of per unit length of the cable. L, L is the distance between span length, that is post to post, what is this length? And T is the optimum mechanical tension applied in the, in the lines, to the line. Uh, 
so much sag has to be modeled in this simulation and uh, this this shape is approx it is a, a parabolic very close to a parabola but the unfortunately these parameters u and l especially this tension this tension what is the tension applied in the cables they are not readily available so but the parameter that is available is s you, they say that okay this much sag is there they they can readily tell then what you can do is uh, okay be, uh, you can you can you can simulate an arc here one point at the tip of the tower other point another tip of the tower then the sag uh, the the sag point here then create a arc which is very close to a parabola for, for this field calculation um, uh, uh, similarly, this uh, depends upon the communication cable parameters. Same formula applies. Now, the U stands for the unit unit uh, weight for the unit length. Similarly, the length is span length is same. Of course, tension will be different here. Similarly, the communication cable uh, sag also. You can you, you, uh, you, uh, taking that into account you simulate that then field along this line is this is the field along this line along the communication cable observe this this here point a and b here the fields the 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 electric fields at the communication cable closer to the end of the towers will be large in the middle, the field will be small. Uh, they will be approximately, uh, this is uh, 16, this is 30, a double, approximately double it will be. The field in the middle will be half this field, what you see close to the towers. Next, uh, uh, the power line jump, another next thing is the geometry of the towers. The tower, you see here, here the tower is, as it is, it is modeled. Like all this uh, trusses and everything as it is modeled. On the right, uh, I showed you here, just uh, the, the part that is close to the cable uh, power lines that maintain, but below it, it is modeled like a, a, a partially par solid, solid tower we made, made it uh, simulated. Next, in both cases, we calculated the fields along the communication cable. Practically, no change. The black, uh, the left side, black curve is the tower as it is. The right side, the red color is a, a, a part uh, that a solid solid tower, and to see the difference, both black and white, we superimposed here, then you, you don't see any difference here. Next, uh, so uh, see, because it is very difficult to see the uh, difference in the field uh, from the curves, just to highlight the, to highlight the actual values we created, uh, we, the, the data also I present, presented, you can see there is no, no difference at all. So it is, it is better. It is, it is easy to model the tower like a solid towers than uh, a, a tower as it is. Okay. Next, uh, the next is the insulator strings. Insulator strings. If you are interested only the fields on the communication cables, you don't have to really bother about the insulator strings. In cases where you need, you want, because you uh, suppose in applications where, okay, I want to see the fields at the insulators, also see the fields at the communication cables. In such case, you, you should model the insulator strings also. You have to consider that also. Now you see here insulation. See, uh, see here, insula 
insulation insulation strings strings if you see here you don't need to model all the sheds of the insulation insulation sheds see here the the first five or six sheds close to the high voltage line similarly five or six from the others uh, 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 like uh, on the ground side you need to model the in between just you don't have to model the insulator yes it treat like a cylinder here and another thing is uh, don't model this as a 360 degree uh, uh, as model try to model it as 180 degree sections or 90 degree section as i shown here uh, so that it will be easy for you uh, in the post processing of the results it will be easy for you you can see the electric fields along the sheds of the insulators from all four uh, directions you can see see for example here uh, i i modeled here in a 90 degree section here see from all four sides i modeled i i, I could see the the results if you model at a 360 degrees it is not it is very difficult to monitor the results next the geometry of the metallic hardware any insulator is tied to the tower with uh, so much uh, metallic hardware and if if you are in, if you are interested uh, when you are in, when this is interested uh, especially uh, uh, the corona rings they want to see what, if you are interested to see what is the electric field on the corona ring on the uh, insulator sheds then you have to model all this uh, and the first tip is uh, you, you you can remove all the bolts and nuts pins washers and all that you remove that so the, the, here in this uh, uh, the, you have to do that otherwise it is you, you cannot uh, do this simulation Uh, another important thing is uh, the most important thing is you see here in this simulation uh, see there are so many parts they are arranged here but most important rule in coulomb or in any boundary element method programs or even finite element method, method programs also there should not be overlapping surfaces for example what is overlapping surface uh, imagine that i'm giving an example here a, 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 a small a small cube is sitting below a, on on top of a big cube and and you see here i am i i i hidden the the surface here to see what is happening at the place of contact you see here this this uh, the green color and this gray color there is a uh, the the bottom surface of the small cube is sitting right on the top of the green color that is the top surface of the cube that is not allowed in the program that is called overlapping of surface that should not happen now see here this is a wrong model right model is so you now you see here now the top surface of the big cube it is not a single surface it is two surfaces one is what you see the green color and also the gray color here so these two surfaces put, put together they form the top surface of the uh, uh, cube uh, then this is the correct model so this kind of care you have to take between every two volumes you have to take and this is a very tough task and a very important task this is the only rule you have to follow in coulomb program now application of the symmetric and periodic condition suppose in a problem you see if there is a symmetric if if the problem is uh, if there is a mirror symmetry is there you use that in the program uh, in, in the modeling then your problem size will come down uh, drastically you will take only one fourth of the time to solve the a full model so now see here here i put a, a uh, i i cut the model into half so uh, i put a, a symmetric Uh, apply about x is equal to zero plane and what you see here is uh, here the electric field on the corona ring i am showing it here to you next uh, so here on the left side you see a full model you are seeing 
this in the right side here, you are putting, I apply two planes of symmetry, x is equal to zero and z is equal to zero. Then I, I, I cut the model into one fourth. So this uh, symmetric model will take uh, one sixteenth of the time of the full model. So you can, you can solve the problems very fast. Next, another type of uh, symmetry, another condition we can use. See here, you see uh, uh, in this transmission line models, uh, the linear periodicity you can apply. Like uh, imagine if you are having, suppose three, four, five, or any number of uh, transmitting towers, assuming they are assuming they are uh, uh, placed at equidistance, then you don't need to model all of those things. Just model the only the central part, you model it and get the results uh, quickly. Uh, uh, let's see here. So uh, here uh, I modeled here, see central part I modeled here. The, the green color that is the central central section. So I said along the x direction, periodic. Uh, I said only three poles I considered here. That's why three poles, and the length between the uh, uh, the periodic section is 300 meters. So that 300 meters I put here. Then solve it. Then you can see the uh, potential variation. Uh, at different planes, you, you, you can calculate. Next, uh, I will show you along the communication cable in the same model, starting, this is the communication cable. So A to B, the field is like this. So, so as mentioned before, near A, you have something like 4.46 kilovolt per meter. Uh, in the middle, it has got a, a close to 2, uh, 2.2. So at the middle, you will have half the electric field uh, of the what you find near the uh, pole. Uh, 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 <clears throat> next, uh, uh, the effect of the, uh, uh, see, you see here uh, in some places, uh, the the terrain, if you consider here, it is gradually increasing. It has different slopes are there. Then, then the poles are eight. Uh, the the poles are from suppose consider these two poles. This communication line is. So this is the communication line shown. If you observe here, the distance between the. Uh, communication line or, or distance between the ground and the power line, it is 8.4 shown here, but whereas here it is small. So here it, you will have higher field at this place. Let's see what are those values. Can you see here? So at point A, that is near point A, you have 0.533 kV per mm. But when it come to point close to point B, you got 2.89. Let's say take it as three, but where is 0.5? So six times higher field is there at this place. You have to consider. So that means your cable should withstand communication or the material made uh, uh, the communication cable. It should withstand the worst uh, uh, the, the highest electric field in this case, which is a 2.89 kV per uh, meter. So next, uh, 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 if you have any questions, uh, I, will, I will be uh, very happy to answer your questions. Yes, it's a very interesting detailed presentation. I was under the understanding that in the in in the real world that especially in distribution lines right. there is a there is a regulated distance between the power and the communications right for instance bell canada has a has a has a, a standard i think it's one meter distance 
Okay. And I often wondered whether or not there was interference. EMF interference between the, uh, the the power lines. It's a much lower voltage than the high voltage transmission towers. Um, but I was wondering if there was still a, uh, an interference, uh, even at one meter away. No, there won't be interference because the reason is uh, the power lines frequencies around that is fifty hertz or sixty hertz. Uh, yeah. uh, but the communication cables that the the signal there it will be in a very high frequency they don't they don't interfere uh, much there interference will not be there only thing is the safety like uh, uh, when 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 they are doing any maintenance of the communication cable the 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 person involved they, they should they should not get exposed to the high high fields that that is of main concern yeah for it's an electrical safety hazard yeah yeah right. and, and also and also this uh, uh, in, in 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 occasions like where some uh, thunder uh, or any high currents are passing then what happens is uh, then suddenly there could be some uh, surges in the electric field, then that may affect mechanically the cables itself, communication cables. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, here's a, here's a question. Do you model interferences from harmonics? Uh, in our program, we don't model that. Is that an important issue? Uh, actually, that is... Uh, uh, I am talking from the side of the high voltage side. Definitely, yeah. it is important issue from the side of the uh, communication side is important issue. Mm -hmm. okay. It is important issue. Right. Okay. What are the practical applications for this modeling software? Uh, this, our software, the Kulum software, it is a, a general purpose software. It can be used uh, to calculate uh, high voltage transformers. Uh, to find out the partial discharge uh, inception uh, power uh, 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 this uh, high voltage transmission powers uh, towers and uh, switch gear uh, like uh, uh, substation uh, sub uh, electrical substations you, you can model and also uh, any application any application what is it what is it in the substation that that can be used for modeling. Uh, bus bars, bushings, okay. bus bars and bushings and all that you can model. Right. Yeah. Do you calculate SAG for communication line and power cable during ice and heavy loading? Yeah, we can do that. Actually, uh, heavy loading, you can do that. And also the birds drop, birds dropping like, uh, 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 I, this is talking, uh, this is, in connection with the uh, um, uh, insulators, uh, insulators. See, when there is a bird dropping, what happens is because of the conductivity of the birds, the, of the birds dropping on the insulators, they get uh, they get damaged. You can you can you can you can do that kind of simulations. We can do icing mm -hmm. and birds dropping. All that we can do. Okay, great. Uh, were there any other questions? I don't think so. Okay. okay. So that was a very, an excellent presentation, very detailed. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you.